new episode of Sunday with the Word of God. Let us be in the presence of God and invoking His name we begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A proclamation from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me. Jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers. In the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people whom I formed myself. That they might announce my praise. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. They said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for men. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad in you. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. A proclamation from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters. I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness from God, depending on faith, to know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it, or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in the hope that I may possess it since I have indeed taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So, what do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to want to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one can condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, this Sunday's Gospel brings to us a story of a woman trapped in the act of adultery. The scribes and the Pharisees bring her out with witnesses to testify against her. She is brought before Jesus. And the great irony of this gospel passage is that it is not the woman who is trapped on trial. It is Jesus who is put on a trial. Jesus, the friend of sinners, tax collectors and prostitutes. What will Jesus do with the sinner when he is confronted with the sinner? Here in this case of an adulterous woman, will he abide by the law of Moses which says to stone her to death or let her go free by which he might violate the law? It's a powerful image. The woman stands alone. She's troubled by what is happening. She knows that her sins will lead her to death. What will Jesus say? What will Jesus do? All eyes are on to Jesus. In the movie The Passion of Christ by Mel Gibson present this scene so well. When the adulterous woman is brought to Jesus, he draws a line on the ground between the crowd and the woman. And this is the first response of Jesus. That is to create a protection layer for the woman protecting her from shame and fear, protecting her from the staring of those men and from the injustice of her captors. And then Jesus upholds the law and says he must be faithful to God's commandments. However, he says, the one without sin cast the first stone at her. And one by one, the crowd walks away, starting with the elders and leaving the woman alone before Jesus. Then the woman looks at directly on the face of Jesus. And Jesus says, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And thus Jesus upholds the teachings of the Father and he does so with love and mercy. The beauty of this gospel passage is that at times in life we are those sons and daughters caught before the act of sin. We sometimes stray from our heavenly father, 
from his words, from his commandments. Sometimes we struggle with ups and downs of life. And when we are brought before Jesus, what will Jesus do? What will Jesus say? Like in the gospel today, when the woman encounters Jesus, Jesus would create protection layer around her and her life changes. Her sins are forgiven. She is given a new chapter, a new chance. Go and sin no more. A new beginning in her life. Turn towards God. And that is the image that is being brought to us during this Sunday. We are on the last week of this Lenten season before the Holy Week begin. And we are reminded once again about conversion, a new beginning. Conversion, turning towards God and to his ways. We are called not to be the people we want to be, but to be the person God wants us to be. To put aside sin, to put aside distraction, and to put our eyes back on the course to fall of Christ. To keep the teachings of Christ that is given to us. To live not by the ways of the world, but by the ways of the kingdom. This is what the first reading is, is telling us today that God is doing something new. Prophet Isaiah says God is doing something new, but he qualifies it by saying, don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the past. Remember not the events of the past. God is doing something new. Let go of the past and let God do the new work in our hearts, in our lives. And once again, let us focus on God and our lives on His ways. During this week, let us deepen our life of prayer. Let us frequent the reception of the Holy Eucharist. Let's go for a, a meaningful sacrament of confession. And this is the way that leads to the joys of heaven. Be attentive to the take of the gospel today that with Jesus Christ, sinners can become saints. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strengthen their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health, protect those who care for them, grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calongsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you, and 
with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, your families, dear and near ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.